I'm starting it with that noise. (laughs) Sydney Olsen, everyone. Sorry, I just had to get it out. (laughs) Still waiting for the burp. Yeah. Well, I I already actually I did it while Sasha was talking, but I was trying to cover it up because he was talking about his leg and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Something so serious. What a letdown! What a letdown! It was the Wagamamas. I I ate a lot there. Um, Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's so good. (laughs) Sydney was talking about that she has such high standards with sushi when we were in Denver and um then she comes here and says like yeah I love wagamamas mm-hmm. and like for us it's like yeah waggers get you know, like, <laughs> like it's not like it's not known to be the best yeah I know but it's I don't know why but I really like their bao buns and we don't mm-hmm. have it in America except for like randomly Atlanta and uh when I was working in Atlanta I went to a wagamamas there and it was trash it was so bad they took oh. forever to serve us. I think we were sitting there waiting for an hour and a half. Oh, and then shit. when we finally got our food, it just did not taste like how it does here. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. England Wagamama's then. It's Let's the way go. to go. It is like one of the best out of the chains though, right? What, what, um, I thought it was what's good. its competition? Itsu. Oh yeah. Itsu is much better, isn't it? Is it? I, I've only had Itsu and I've had like one Wagamama, so I can't actually judge. But. <laughs> Welcome back to the Star Podcast, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> We're well, here about that wagon number. <laughs> Sydney Olsen, everyone. Sorry, and, I feel like I'm already tipsy. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Tipsy. Tipsy already on Half Bacardi, Mojito. Lime, Can. mint, and rum. Yeah. We're, we're experimenting with this new thing where we <laughs> let the guests choose the alcohol. And oh. so far we've had Renee with mimosas mm-hmm. and and this so mm-hmm. let down so far um <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> I quite <laughs> like it <laughs> no, I'll never admit on record that I enjoy this yeah it's actually quite delicious I don't know what you're talking about no, I really enjoy it mm-hmm. <laughs> guys New favorite don't drink. tell the podcast listeners I really enjoy it okay um <laughs> anyway <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> podcast. Welcome. Let's get past the bloody intro. <laughs> it's always so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has got to be like 40th episode now and I'm still bad at no, this. No, no, you're great. It's just that we've been talking for hours and now we're like recording it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. We should have just kept the mics off. Um, you're doing your own podcast though mm-hmm. as well, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. How's that been going? It's good. It's, um, it's definitely like what you just said where it hasn't gotten any easier in the sense that you feel like you every time you push record you have all these things that you want to say but then they don't come out the way you wanted them to and you're just like oh god okay so you you kind of it's weird though because I always listen to part of them back and I'm like oh that was way better than I thought it was but I think you're just hypercritical of yourself when you're that high standard yeah how you wanted to come across yeah Yeah, I've never done one um because you do like a lot of solo blasts where like you're just speaking into the ether essentially like um (laughs) It's just you and and a microphone, mm-hmm. and like you've done some with guests and stuff as well. Um, yeah, but like, yeah, I've not done one just rattling on on my own. There's a few like where I actually want to like talk about rehab and strength and conditioning topics and stuff. But mm-hmm. I think I like write out stuff rather than just oh, I do on bullet point. And yeah, I I do write write stuff out. I don't I don't sit there and like read from a script or anything. But I write out a bunch of bullet points, mm. and I have to kind of like write out bullet points to those bullet points, so that way I know exactly what mm. I'm trying to say. Just because, to remind yourself. Yeah, yourself. I'll miss out on yeah. points and stuff. <clears throat> but I, yeah, the solo episodes are much harder for me to do. I can imagine. Yeah, so many takes. Yeah, I did the um, like it's a seven minute intro to um, the Theo Tanchak and no bullshit physio like debate. Um, I don't know if you know Theo Tanchak, it's the guy that mm-hmm. does all the Callum's enemy. analysis and stuff. He's not my enemy. I like the guy. <laughs> I, was, I was upset when he stopped making videos. Like, I thought I was like, yeah, yeah, I he caused this. Of you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he is back and he's made some. Um, he's made some videos about like lifting for parkour, which I haven't actually watched yet, and and he. He's probably baiting, thankful for baiting that, me yeah. in as well, like because he used like uh, me on the on the thumbnail, oh, no like way. lifting in the the leopard skin. <laughs> the leopard and skin you haven't jacket. watched it. I don't, I'm just bad at watching YouTube videos. Yeah, but it has you on the fucking cover. Yeah, so I know. I'm, I'm, How do you know it's not slander? You have to watch yeah, it. it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> no, bore my blood. No, 
Um, no, glad he's making videos again. Uh, what were we talking about? Um, Podcasts. Yeah, you were talking about. I don't know where you were going with it. Nothing. <laughs> I'm not sure. Which... <laughs> but you said something about him. <laughs> I went to something else. But I think what we were trying to say is like when you record a solo episode yeah. or something, um, how hard it is to do that. Yeah, you did that seven minute intro. Oh yeah, yeah, seven minute intro, and that was like that took so many takes. That was that sucked. Mm. But cut it up to fuck as well, so it wasn't just terrible to listen to i think yeah. it's weird I, I kind of have a strategy for it now where um the because the first episode that i ever recorded i don't know how many times i tried to record it before i actually released it and it was the first episode but i think i told myself like this is the last time i'm doing it and it's just it will be what it is and i just need to put it out there mm. and i think as soon as i just told myself that it was a lot easier to just get past any mistakes i was like oh i said mm. that wrong whatever i'll just say i said that wrong no big deal like yeah. everybody fucks yeah. up and so you just keep going it's more of a conversation rather than <laughs> yeah like, just yeah trying to get it exact like an essay or something mm. yeah exactly because it's people don't really want to listen to like a well-rehearsed Thing anyway yeah, yeah i mean they'd probably rather just sit in on the conversation that we're having now and mm -hmm. be like oh they're so relatable you know? <laughs> <laughs> they're so authentic oh my god they burp too cool <laughs> <laughs> i can fart if you want um what was your reason for um starting the podcast um honestly because i i have a fear of speaking it's weird. Like I, I did vlogs and stuff like that for a long time with YouTube, but you're cacking it right now. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. now you just made it worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's something that I would like to get better at. Um, so, and I I love listening to podcasts. I find them just so fascinating. I listen to them all the time, like on car journeys and walks and stuff like that, or when I'm running. Um, I just get like a lot of inspiration from them, and I come I come up with a lot of ideas for things I would like to talk about. So. I kind of figured that's why I should be making a podcast because I didn't really care who ends up listening to it. It's just more <laughs> for me to get like ideas out there. I write every morning too. So it's just like, I have all these things that people talk to me about and I feel like it's something that maybe people want to hear about. So if I just put something out there and whoever needs to hear it will, mm -hmm. and then whoever mm -hmm. doesn't care, doesn't need to listen to it. Sweet. But it was just kind of that idea that mm. I figured like, why not have one? Mm. And it's not necessarily like parkour based. No, no. Um, I didn't really want it to just be that. Of course, mm. like I'll always have parkour guests on it and yeah. like that'll be a heavy topic because it's a lot of my life and it has been mm. for the last like 13 years. So, um, but I, I would rather kind of talk to people that have been through some pretty crazy situations and like had to overcome something I think mm. is really cool. Um, and those are the conversations that I'm always the most inspired by. So that's sure. just where it's kind of leading to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, your one with Nate Weston was really good. Yeah, yeah, I like that one a lot because Nate's kind of like a shy person. Mm. <laughs> so um, getting him to like open up about what he's feeling like in his mind and like, you know, like how he perceives a big scary jump that he's going to do and stuff was really, really cool. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm just nervous about... Do you think the, mic the camera can see your face? Because we've never had someone this short on the podcast before. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I mean, I moved the... <laughs> what a way to say it. <laughs> never had someone so yeah, fucking never, short before. Ever. <laughs> it's actually unbelievable. Oh, fine. Should, I, should I get a booster seat? Like, <laughs> yeah. Maybe a pillow. <laughs> That's what we had to... Cool. So, when we went on that tour with Jesse back in 2018, whenever I drove the tour bus, I had to sit on a pillow. Oh really? In order to reach the um, <laughs> so, the the little, like in the films they put the little like books under the seat. Yeah, yeah. Little kids trying. To... <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> you're, and you're accepting it. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm so short. We established that we don't even need it. There but now go. I wonder if they're going to be able to hear me. I think it's, it's fine. Too far away from the mic. Just crunch, crunch. Yeah, maybe over. you just need to have the worst posture. This is ever. comfortable. Sydney's got really bad posture. Theo Tanchak will make a fucking video about you. <laughs> Great, come at it. Cool back. <laughs> come at me, bro. Um, how's training right now? Um, it's interesting. So, uh, I don't know. I, it goes back and forth. Like the last couple of years, um, I've been a lot busier with work and um, just general life stuff. And I've been traveling a lot more, doing more of like my own thing. But when it comes to training, I feel like 
I haven't been progressing. Like this is probably the first year that I feel like I'm not actually progressing. Like I'm not getting any better than I was last year. Um, and the reason why is because I'm just not training like much at all. I'll have a session here and there and I'll be like, oh yeah, this is why I love it. And then I'll be too sore to do anything the next day. Mm -hmm. And then um, maybe a week will go by and I realize like I haven't trained again. And so then I kind of get back into it. It's this whole cycle where each time I do train, I get in my head about um, what I'm capable of doing because I haven't been training. So I'm like, oh, I probably can't do that though because I haven't been training. Mm -hmm. So it's like this weird kind of crisis with it where I have to like convince myself that even though I don't train as much as I used to, I'm still very capable of doing things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, Have you noticed like well yeah it would be the confidence thing wouldn't it like we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier yeah. yeah it's um how do i explain it <laughs> sorry the smoky dough man <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's getting wild <laughs> it'll be useful when we start chatting shit about people oh anyway. it's great can't wait um <laughs> and then the sage will be useful after that yeah we could use that now actually oh yeah great um Always on deck but I think, yeah, it's just this confidence of like, you kind of have to push yourself through it. Obviously, if you're if you're sitting there worried about whether or not you can do something, I have to remember that I haven't really lost any strength or yeah. anything like that. I still work out a ton. I still like, mm. I still am doing relatively the same things and I'm doing a lot more martial arts and stuff too. Um, it's just things that I'm really enjoying right now. Like I got really into jujitsu the last year. And so that's been a really fun thing to learn. But yeah, these things kind of end up getting in the way of training, I guess. And so yeah. then when I start to train and I worry about whether or not I can do something, I have to just kind of push myself to do it anyway because it builds up that confidence. Like the moment that you push through a challenge and you're like, oh, okay, I I can push through that. Like maybe I can push through the next thing and stuff. And it's just kind of, it feels like I'm just trying to get back to where I was confidence wise. But it's it's a strange phenomenon because yesterday I was working on that Kong Pre that I did like four years ago or something. Yeah. And it's it's just kind of an awkward one because it's really low. And um, I don't know, it, it's kind of far for how low it is, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So back in 2019, I did that before. And it was back when I was like training every day and I was really confident and stuff. And then I did it again yesterday. But it took me a while. But then I like looked back on it. And I was like, oh, the technique is actually way, way massively better now, even though mm. I didn't think I'd be able to do it because I was like, oh, I'm not as strong as I was or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the technique was way better. So I think it's it's kind of trusting your experience that you have and developing the confidence around like if you don't train every day, like it doesn't mean that you're not as good. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still able to do all those things as long as you believe that, I guess. Yeah. Muscle memory is such a powerful thing as well. It's yeah. Like, it's just the confidence is gone, but like you got to trust in, like you do know how to do it no matter what. It's like, uh, mm -hmm. like the muscle memory still be there to like do the same moves that you were doing back then, even if you haven't done them in a while or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a strange thing. Like I said, life doesn't always allow for this very like regimented training schedule that I used to have. And I think we talked about this yesterday, actually where um if you if you have like a routine or something sometimes you kind of rely a little bit too much on the routine and mm -hmm. uh so like if you go without doing the routine you your whole day is like out of sorts or whatever yeah so it kind of feels the same way as like if i was really regimented i would feel really good about myself but then if i started missing a few days of training i would feel really bad about mm -hmm. myself and so now it's just trying to understand like training's still a great part of my life but but like with my career and with all these other things too, and like having a husband now and like having, I don't know, just all these other things that I want to do. It's important to see that like that still has the place, but it's not everything. Mm -hmm. And if it's not everything, I can still do just as much with that. Yeah. 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 Were you at a similar um, stage in your training where it was like, I guess, very up and down because of uh, like the stunt work and everything you can't exactly like train all the time with busy with stunts were you in a in a, in a similar kind of phase when um because you won red bull out of motion the, the last one mm -hmm. um the one that, which had a funny format um yeah was it a similar phase and and were you like really surprised that yes <laughs> actually, <laughs> yes 100%. that you were actually still able to throw down to, yeah like, yeah actually it level. was it was really wild um Last year, uh, leading up to that competition, I was like, oh my God, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Like, I'm so not ready to be competing. And I thought for sure, like, 
this time around. I just, I wasn't going to win or anything like that, which I was fine with um, for the first time in my life because winning used to be like a really important thing to me. And this time around, I was like, okay, you know, like, I think it's time for someone else to kind of take that on. Pass the torch. Yeah, Come pass on. the torch. Like, I'm getting old. <laughs> you know? Now. Yeah. And so I, I was even Step talking down. to Lilu beforehand and I was like, yeah, like, you're, you're probably going to win, blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, I think it's great and I'm not going to make it easy or something like that. I said something like that. <laughs> and then um, it was so weird because after the first day, which was like the exploration challenge, I remember I just had so much fun. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, this is what it's all about. Right. And I had like one of those moments again. I was like, this is why I love training. And then the next day was the one where we go out and we make a video. And I got Jesse as my partner for a videographer. Yeah, and Jesse and I have like made videos together all of the time. Mm -hmm. And um, we it, we used to just do it. Yeah, we'd, we'd come up with a concept and we'd- Super like comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was so weird. So we were talking about like what we wanted to do with that video and I had the theme of like, Can I you just okay? interrupt? Yeah. <laughs> is it, this was your first choice, wasn't it? Yeah, what is it? The So now colada. we are drinking the Malibu Pina Colada cocktail in a can. And um, sorry, this was worth interrupting for. <laughs> Ooh, let me just say, ooh, have you tried a bit yet? No, I haven't actually. Wait, wait, wait. Get your neck around that and give us an ooh, ooh. <laughs> Face? <laughs> that is actually well good. Have you finished yours already? No. Or are you just... I'm just going to do both. <laughs> Sydney <laughs> Olsen. Double. Oh, that actually double is so good. on the podcast. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let me... Oof. <laughs> but so, what were we talking about? Um, so you were super comfortable with Jesse doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was so stoked <laughs> that Jesse was my partner for this videographer thing. And um, when we were talking about what we wanted to do the video about, I was like, oh, I just really like... I feel like this is my last year that I'm doing this, so I just want to go hard as fuck. And that mm -hmm. was like the theme for it. That's it. And I don't know why, but... I think it's because just the setup was so perfect and you could have a mat and you could practice things and then take the mat away when you were ready to do mm -hmm. it to concrete. And it just made me feel so confident, like with every move that I hadn't done in forever, I'd just do it to a mat first and then yeah, take it yeah. away. So um, then by the end, like I hadn't done a Sukahara in probably, I don't know, like a few years at least and certainly like hadn't done it to hard ground in a long time either so mm. i did one to a mat and i was just like yeah fuck it let's go and <laughs> yeah. i don't know where this confidence like came from but then it was just after that that i was like oh i actually probably could win if i really wanted to and then i was yeah. like yeah i do want to and there was it all came back yeah, yeah it all came back and it was for a while before the art of motion i kind of like didn't like this competitive side to me. I decided it wasn't really a good quality to have. Mm -hmm. But then that brought it back and I. it turns out it's actually a great thing because mm -hmm. it ends up bringing the best out of everybody in the competition. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not just, oh yeah, we should no, all if just- everyone didn't care, it yeah. just wouldn't be so much of like a yeah, fun yeah. thing to try and win. Like, it, is, yeah. it is annoying, like the old school mindset of like, yeah, I, I don't really rate him or her though because they, um, they take part. They take the competition really seriously, and it's like that. That like ingrained trickle down. Like even though you're competing, but like if you're caring about winning, then that's not like true to parkour or something. When yeah. it's already like you're halfway there by being there, like already. So shut the fuck up and just like <laughs> try and win and and like put on the best show as well. Like yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. just kind of. Um, yeah, I think we're over that now, but I, I don't know if there's still like. There's kind still of that some in, of it, but try I've, fucking hard. Like, <laughs> it makes it, it better for everyone. Yeah, pushes, yeah. pushes the sport and yeah, makes it makes it look so. better spectacle. I think it's a cop out. I think people say that as a cop out, like because they don't yeah. think that they have it in them to push mm, that hard, right. so they don't yeah. want to. Yeah, don't judge me. I'm not trying that hard. This isn't my best stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this isn't my best. So really, stuff. they're like fucking try. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's yeah, it's so funny. I think it's I think it's good to care, and um, mm -hmm. like I said, it brings out the best in everybody rather than it just being like, like if I didn't try. And then it would just be like, you know, Lily would win and stuff and like, that'd be great, but it'd be so easy for her, mm -hmm. you know? And like, I just, I don't know. I don't want that. Like I want, especially in the women's part, like I want people to have to fucking try and like, mm -hmm. I want it to look good. So, yeah, you know, sure. you gotta, you gotta do your best. And mm -hmm. so I was, yeah, I was really stoked with that. That was kind of like an excellent surprise. Um, didn't know I still had that in me at the time, but um, yeah, so it's like. It's so funny to go through a cycle of like feeling that again a year later where I'm just like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I didn't, don't really train anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking sick. And to still like just shell down and like 
the the, the young guns that are coming in. <laughs> like- <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, and, <laughs> and they definitely could be me. The, the thing is, too, is like, it's just, I think when we were talking about it, it just comes down to that experience. Like, I know exactly what they're looking for, the There's judges a lot and stuff. There's inexperience. Yeah. Still. yeah. Like, even if, like, physically you're, you're, like, in our 30s, we might not be the best. But, like, I, I said this in a caption the other day with the, with the Crete Plyo challenge, like, that was, like, a dream challenge for me. I'm, I'm pretty fucking confident that me like there, there is no past me that would have been capable of doing mm. of that particular thing because mm. of like all the experience like yeah. it doesn't matter just about the physical like this is a mental and technical sport as well like mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah yeah i would always like like you could do the most complex new trick and in a line or whatever but i'd always pick the line that was just made the smartest or made the best and it's like and if you are treating that like in the competition you know what the judges want to see and stuff mm-hmm. it's like that's what's going to get rated highly it's like you just know how the competition works and- yeah exactly and that's yeah. and that's all it is like i said they because they and they're smart too mm. they'll you know the next time that happens they'll definitely know and like yeah, they're learning yeah, each yeah, time because they're getting that experience as well so yeah. yeah it's a it's a really interesting thing but my favorite pastime too is to look back on old videos and be like, oh yeah, no, I've really like massively improved. Mm-hmm. So it's it's fun to look back on. That's it. What do you think of the new um, format? The new format. Thank mm. you, Sasha. <laughs> the <laughs> m- new format of Red Bull Art Motion. Do you think they're going to do that again as well? I have no idea. Um, I know that from what I understand, they're not doing it this year. So I don't know um, mm, what the okay. deal is with that. But from what I understand, they're not mm. doing a Red Bull Art of Motion this year. It was yeah. a little bit confusing last year just because it was so entertaining to watch each like round and stuff. But at the end, you know, it's like broadcasting on TikTok. Uh, TikTok. It wasn't clear for the viewer. It wasn't clear because it was like the purse. Per- Ellis got the highest score, but Verky still won or something like that. Yeah, no, I think I think yeah. it was Ed. Yeah, Ed got the highest score, actually. Oh, okay. And okay. Verky still won. Yeah, it was super confusing. Okay, so. Streamed on TikTok as well. From an yeah, from an outside, <laughs> I hate TikTok too. From an outside perspective, I'm sure it was like really, really hard to understand. But sorry, I'm there just we go. Burping. We got the bird. Like <laughs> sorry, <laughs> God, I'm so ladylike right now. I love it. Um, so from the inside perspective, though, it was really amazing. Like I really enjoyed that probably more than anything um, that I had done with Red Bull before in the past. Like it just felt like so much less pressure from the beginning because you were already training that whole week. Whereas in the past, like I'd show up to a Red Bull Art of Motion and I'd be stressed the whole week and like just be practicing my run and like trying not to do anything else because I wanted to save my energy for that like main event. But through this this one, um, because you're already like training at the beginning and you're getting clips with your friends who are also competing, it's like sets up that really good environment to where everyone kind of just, yeah, you're just doing your normal thing. You're going out and training and you're making lines together and you're like yeah. filming it. And then <clears throat> doing the video challenge and also that's really fun. And it's everybody's kind of unique expression too of what their take is on parkour. And one of my favorite memories now in life is actually just sitting there watching everybody's like we all had pop- popcorn and stuff. And mm-hmm. like we we're it was just nighttime and like everybody had finished editing and we we're watching everybody's video. Oh, and it was really cool. So that was my probably my favorite part of that whole event. And then the live challenge was just after doing all of that, it just felt so much easier. There was so much less pressure mm-hmm. um, on the whole thing because you had already done it's all these solely on that yeah. one performance. It's like accumulating on the mm. exactly. Yeah. So it was just kind of like okay, like this is easy. Like what we're doing is cool, and we've already done so much. But yeah, from the outside, I, I'm sure it was just kind of really hard to follow. I guess it allows like more people to uh, more people's strengths to actually shine through rather mm-hmm. than just um, like say Ellis is is like arguably the goat right now with style lines Mm -hmm. but like in terms of making a video maybe he's not quite experienced with that yeah 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 yeah. um and yeah ed and ed and travis do really good at doing stuff like finding stuff in the streets and like challenge based stuff Mm -hmm. as well as like absolutely like you know mad flips and lines shows more of an all-round all-rounded athlete Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah different creative stuff and also yeah yeah Yeah, i think it it sets up for a lot of that is like you said different different styles and different strengths that everybody has and it's just like i said it's more fun because you have several chances to do well Mm -hmm. it's not just that one and i think 
as far as that's concerned. Like maybe through Red Bull, it's better because then they have more content related to it. Yeah, but I think that's that was probably the reason, wasn't it? I'm sure. Yeah, but then as far as the viewership is concerned. Um, I don't know how well it did on TikTok, but I just know that it's like extremely hard for my mom mm. or someone to be able to watch yeah. it because they're not like going to go on TikTok. TikTok. Mm -hmm. They don't have that. So how was it as uh, a live event compared to the other ones? Like Matera was mad, which you also won. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it was it was different, but also the same. It was still it still came with the same kind of like pressure of people watching and stuff. Um, I feel like when I'm performing, it doesn't matter how many people are watching, I still feel the same. Like it could be right. like as many as there were in uh, in Greece that time where it was it was still a lot, but it mm. wasn't anything near like what it was in Italy. And it would feel the same to me. What if it was a million people watching on TikTok? <laughs> See, I don't a know. A billion people watching it on TikTok. It doesn't feel like a anything gazillion. to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, hold on, hold on. No. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. I mean, when people are watching it online, it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't feel that. Like I don't a know. A bunch of billion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, it makes sense that they're um they care less about making it a live performance where like because in materia. In Matera, there was probably like 500 people max watching live at the event, but like on TikTok, people watching, like, uh, it could be a budge a billion yeah. people it could watching. Be. No, like, there could, there could be like thousands of people watching, and like, an on the online space is, is just, mm -hmm. you know, more yeah. for them to invest in, especially as like, it's right there for them to get the followers and everything. And mm -hmm. the engagement means so much more for them. Right. When I talked to Nico about it, I thought it was pretty interesting because um, I don't know if a lot of people knew this, but that the last Red Blood emotion that we did have was uh, it wasn't really supposed to be that it wasn't going to be a competition. It was originally going to be a basically a Red Bull athlete summit. So they were going to have um, all of the Red Bull athletes in the sport uh, just come together in Greece and basically do kind of the first two. And it wasn't going to be like a competition. They were going to just do like the content creation sort of thing together oh, okay. but then i think red bull came in and said like we're not gonna pay you unless like we're not gonna give you money unless you call it the red bull art emotion so right. they think that's when it kind of came in and became red bull art emotion mm -hmm. even though it wasn't like originally that plan so i think that's if uh, i hope i'm not butchering that story and if nico's listening mm -hmm. to this for some reason i'm so sorry mm -hmm. if yeah. i got that wrong <laughs> but yeah i think that's what i remember the conversation being something mm -hmm. like interesting yeah 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 yeah, sorry if it seems weird bringing bringing this up because it's like old, kind of old news now, like yeah, in right. terms of the the competition. But it's definitely worth like um, talking about in terms of like you're still able to shell down like when it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how how long? That, that's that's the point. Like, how long have you been a competitive athlete and mm. probably one of the most like decorated uh, athletes on like the competition circuit? Well, like, thank with, you. Like, yeah. uh, well, NABC now SPL and everything as well. Yeah, um, so I've been training for 13 and a half years, um, but competing since, like, the end of, no, when was this? It was the beginning of 2014, so, yeah, I guess nine years. That's crazy. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that's uncommon. Yeah. It's really uncommon for people, for athletes to last that long, like, on the competitive circuit before, like, the new Ellis Torholes, Lilu, mm -hmm. Lilu and, and Noah come through and everything, and just like push the old geezers out like <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's a thing it's definitely hard and and i think there's a part of it too that this is a weird thing that i guess like maybe not everybody knows about me but um i've always been a very good performer um like ever since i've been a kid i don't know what it is but like whenever i'm kind of like on the like on a stage or something or whenever i have to like get in character and do a stunt or something like that uh it's not it doesn't feel like me. It's like a different version of me that like kind of takes over. Mm. And um, then I kind of I get done with what I'm doing. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that was, but that was cool. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And it's it's something that I've always been able to do. Just kind of snap it on when it needs to be there. Right. Um, it, it was the same when I did gymnastics as a kid. Like I was always just really good with that kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of why I still do it. 
is because there's something there that I really enjoy about that, even though leading up to it, it feels terrible. Like, and I, I'm always regretting the decision to participate in something like that. Yeah. But then, yeah, yeah. but then, yeah, it comes around and like you love every minute of actually performing. And then afterwards it has that really good feeling yeah, that you're so, buzz, yeah, yeah that you're so glad you did it. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, I don't know if I'll still continue to compete like this year and stuff, but that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I haven't decided yet, but with little injuries and stuff like that, mm. I don't really feel like it's the time to kind of push in mm. that direction. Yeah. What but, are the pros and cons? Is it, main, um, is it mainly injuries or? It's mainly that. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I always want to show up as my best self in competitions, even though it's not always a guarantee to do that. And mm. like I said, with the added pressure, I can guarantee that I'll be like at least 10% better on the day. Mm. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, there's like, there's this kind of need to like be able to show up as as like my best self when I'm competing. And I think if I were to compete right now, I honestly feel like I wouldn't be able to do that. But I don't know. I, I don't want to say never. Like maybe I'll yeah. get the opportunity to do it and I'll be yeah, excited yeah. about it. But I think that's the main reason is I'm just not I'm just not super excited by it right now. Mm -hmm. So mm. I think that's why I'm just kind of leaning against it right now. Are you qualified for SPR? I am, yeah. I'm, I'm qualified. Too, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm qualified for skill and style. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to do something else with it this year, like rather be involved hmm. in a different way. Are you still going? Yeah, I think so. Are uh, you? I'd love to. I yeah. think it clashes with, with our plans. Oh, Are you yeah. Our plans. Our plans. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, your plans. I know what this documentary is. Documentary kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Star film. Cut that can out. we can we say stuff? Cut, cut that out. I mean, like it's already been teased, like an Odyssey thing, like oh yeah, sure. <laughs> years ago, like the ten year doco that's been out yeah, now, yeah, like yeah. probably like just three years late. Um, so, so when is SPL two? Is it in August or something? It's in August. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Good Maybe. diversion away from the from the film. <laughs> <laughs> and our plan. Um, yeah, August August nineteenth uh, to twenty first, okay. I think. So oh. I think we're busy. Yeah, we went, we, we went we went to the twenty nineteen one, um mm. and NAPC. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. And yeah, it was just so fun to actually be there. Yeah. But I do even if if we can't make it, I do enjoy just putting on that live stream. It's so, that's it's my favourite competition to mm. watch. It sure. is so fun to watch, yeah. 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 It's getting way better as yeah, well. Yeah, it it's is. Way better. Mm -hmm. It is. I feel like because I've been, so I've been involved with that one since I mean, 2014. The live stream, sorry. The yeah, live yeah. Stream's getting no, better. that too. That yeah. too. But the competition in general is mm -hmm. also getting a lot better. Yeah, every year. Because when I first started in it, I think it was 2014. And uh, yeah, it used to be like kind of disorganized and kind of like a stressful weekend. You could tell like for Renee mm. and Tom and stuff. Was 2014 the one where they did like the battle format? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was, it was actually... going in 2014. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think, yeah. It started in... I think 2013, 2013 is when they started no it. No way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 2014 the one where like Corey Demire's absolutely lost his shit. Like, yeah, because because of the the whole like b boy battle thing, like how the judges do that to like which teams. Yeah, were yeah. Head -to -head. Yeah. Why did he just like had that? a bit had a bit of a patty? I think, <laughs> so I think what had happened. Disrespectful, wasn't it? No, I think he like didn't know what he was pointing at. He was like, uh, and make he like couldn't clear. make his yeah, mind up or yeah, something. Yeah. And then he just ended up going um for the other team. But oh, okay, okay. that yeah, that was I really enjoyed the battle styles with um it was with a partner too. And I remember that year was actually my first competition besides this random one that I did in China that was just like not a thing. <laughs> but um that was my first like competition. And it actually changed my entire life um, because, right. yeah, so that... This is before you were invited on to Tempest. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. I... Okay. Okay. This back is the beginning of it. Okay. Up, back up. Back up. Back the fuck up. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, you don't swear on this podcast. I'm what sorry. the hell, man? Just yeah. to sorry. Back. Sorry. <laughs> We've been swearing. So pretty I'm pretty sure, sure I said cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cut. <laughs> Okay, I don't even think I, I'm like gonna cry. Because um, <laughs> Christine's gonna listen to that and she hates the word cunt. So don't say the word cunt. Which word? Cunt. <laughs> cunt. Yes, cunt. She doesn't like cunt. She she hates the word cunt. So Oof. we shouldn't say the word cunt. So we shouldn't say cunt. Sydney definitely shouldn't say cunt. <laughs> well, I'm American, so it's not okay for me to say that. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Mo moving on. For that. <laughs> anyway, okay, so sorry, Christine. Let's back up. <laughs> back so, back fuck the fuck up, up. <laughs> you cunts. Right, okay, okay, okay. God damn it. Um, so 
I lived in China for a year in 2013 to early 2014. Mm. And then I decided I wanted to move back to the United States and I wanted to get into stunts and I also wanted to pursue like parkour in some way, shape or form because I was getting way better at it and I was really enjoying it. So I moved back to the States and I think one of the first things that happened was um, NAPC was taking place and I, I reached out to Renee on the internet. <laughs> the internet, wow. Um, <laughs> I sound really old. <laughs> And I, I said I would like to compete, and he was like, yeah, definitely, just make your way up. So I went up to Canada with a friend, and the crazy thing is, is that I almost didn't compete because I got there and I was, like, extremely nervous. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. there were no other, like, there was a couple other girls that were going to try and get in the competition, but really, like, you were competing against the men, so there wasn't, like, a women's division or anything oh, okay. like that. So uh, me and the guy that I was partnered with, um, Caleb, who was also from, like, the Seattle community at the time, uh, we were partners together and we ended up qualifying for like the main competition and stuff. So I was really stoked because I was the only girl that ended up qualifying and I was like not expecting that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So then the next day um, I competed and stuff and, you know, it went as well as it would for <laughs> who I was back then, which wasn't that good. Hmm. But um, but I was stoked that I did it. And afterwards, um, Jesse and Corey actually talked to me and I was telling them about how I wanted to get into stunts. Mm. And, they made um, you swallow a goldfish then and there. No, not then and there. <laughs> that was years later. Okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but you did murder an innocent goldfish. Yeah, I know. I still feel guilty it. about it. Yeah. But anyway. So does Toby. <laughs> did Toby do it too? Yeah, and he's not even in fucking Tempest. What's that about? Yeah, well, if you were in LA, we'd make you do it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If anyone doesn't know, this is like some weird initiation thing that people did. Jesse Peverell never did it. He pretended oh. at, at, the, at the takeover in 2012. I'm calling you out, Jesse, <laughs> that isn't watching this or mm. listening. That's um, so rude. Yeah, he didn't fucking do it. <laughs> Actually, it's not. <laughs> what did he do with the goldfish? He didn't swallow it. Did he just spit it out somewhere? So it was just yeah. like, he spat drank it. the water and it was just suffocating <laughs> in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, just like, imagine he like, just like drinking it and then like spitting out on the floor. It's like, yes. <laughs> Swim away, little buddy, <laughs> oh, and it's no. just like on the floor, it's flapping away. It's like, yeah, I did the right thing. <laughs> be cool, yeah. Oh my god! I don't know what's worse, like suffocating or drowning in stomach acid. Oh, I don't know. Who's calling me? It doesn't matter. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <yeah. laughs> sorry. Let's back the fuck up. So sorry. Let's back the fuck up again. Okay, so. I was talking to Jesse and Corey about how I wanted to get into stunts and stuff, and they were doing that at the time. And uh, so after NAPC, I go back to my job as a nursing assistant, and it was really hard, and I didn't want to be there. And I got a call from Jesse, and he needed someone um, that was a parkour athlete to do this music video in LA. So he was like, yeah, we'll fly you out to LA and we'll pay you $500. And at the time I was like, $500, that's amazing. To just jump around. Yeah, just to jump around. I was so <laughs> stoked. And um, especially because at my nursing assistant job, I was making $12 an hour, like okay. literally taking care of old people and having oh, to like, shit, okay. yeah, help yeah. them on the toilet and stuff. So oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember you saying, I think that's, what, what, what year was that? When did you stop at least? Uh, I stopped that job in 2014. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I can get more into that. But um, so, yeah, that next week I went down to LA and I did that job. And the funny thing is, is like that that kind of job where you're getting paid $500 um, to do something like that. It's a lot of stunt performers would find that like kind of insulting and they wouldn't want to do that because yeah. it's so little money mm -hmm. to do what they can do. For a whole shoot, yeah. But for me, that was like literally life changing. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, um, I think right after that, I went back to back to my job and I actually put in my two weeks notice right then and there because I was like, I need to I need to move and yeah, go pursue yeah. that. So I think it's really interesting how NAPC was like that. Oh, wow. It was the it cause of that. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So oh, that's that's so good. Yeah. Thank you, NAPC. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I tell Renee and Tom that every year and they, they know the story and I still tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't compete, if you didn't go to NAPC, like your life would have been so different. It would have been different. I think I still would have probably Ended up moved like down there. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Um, because that was the plan, is I didn't oh, want right. to stay in Seattle when I moved back from China. But um, but I think I needed that push to actually do it because um, I was, I was kind of comfortable. Like, it's hard to actually do that. And it's funny coming from someone that had just lived in a foreign country where I couldn't speak the language the year before. And I was like, but moving to LA is scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, I think I needed that push to like realize it is possible. 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's so crazy how NAPC was, like, the cause of all of that. But, yeah, I mean, before that, I had I had a job as a nursing assistant, and that was, mm. yeah, that was a really hard job. <laughs> yeah, that's the funny thing. You said you, you were comfortable and just wiping bums. <sighs> yeah, I wasn't comfortable. Like, I guess that's not a good word to describe yeah. that. But it was, mm, it was more like I, I mean, I was also in a relationship at the time um, that... I was comfortable with and I was so young too and I didn't understand that like that was the definition of settling (laughs) so I think that there was part of me that didn't want to disrupt that and stuff um but having something like that actually happen where I got to go and do it and realize like this is what I need to be doing was Mm. so important to be able to move on and actually do it Mm. yeah how did you get into stunts I mean, everybody has a different way that they get into it, depending on like what their background is and who they know and stuff. But it's certainly not from people being like reaching out to people that are already in the industry and be like, "Yeah, hook me up, bro." Hook yeah, up. God, you would be surprised though at how many people actually do well, that. They message you. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, and it's fine if they actually just want like general advice and stuff like that. Yeah, I always respond to that, but they want you to just them jobs. Yeah, and link them to Jesse Lafleur's book on. Well, yeah obviously. honestly yeah. that's great like yeah. <laughs> that did not exist when i first got into stunts no so it is it is sick yeah. it what is was it? um so. how to become a stuntman uh, yeah he yeah. Book, yeah he wrote a book on it and it's so good it's cool. like i think um i didn't have those kind of tools when i first started and i wished that i did because it's actually the procedure of it is quite complicated nobody mm-hmm. really there's so many rules and um so much etiquette that nobody tells you and you just it's not necessarily common sense so mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to like just go yeah, out there and figure dancing it out. Dancing around it on your first job and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was very lucky to have the support of other people when I was trying to pursue it. But basically the way I got into it was I had that first job on that music video, right? And then I moved to LA. And um, I think just Jesse had kind of like told some of his friends that like I was new and I was just trying to get into it and stuff. And Um, That person that I had done the first job with recommended me to another person that needed a stair fall for a music video um, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so once again, I'm getting paid $500 to do a stair fall. And I would say no to that now. Oh my God. (laughs) Had you ever done it before? Straight from parkour to stair falls as well. Like not not like special action performer kind of like thing. Like straight from parkour and you're doing like some specific stuff that is like your wheelhouse. (laughs) Straight to like, no, we need someone to fall down some stairs. It's like, but, I've not done this before, <laughs> God, yes. It's interesting, though, because, like, you ha- you do fall a lot as a parkour athlete, so you have the ability yeah. to fall. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't, I'm sick. Fall safely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up, I've seen you bail. Oh, um, insert all of your bails now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like, um, I don't know, so you know how to fall, but I think the thing that people don't understand is how much acting goes into this as well. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to, like, imitate the actor that's imitating the character doing the stunt if that Mm -hmm. makes sense like how they would fall and how they'd react yes Hmm. so i don't know a thing that i learned later on in my career was to like watch whatever they're doing and see how they actually Um, move get all their mannerisms Mm -hmm. yeah exactly it's an important thing but anyway to go back to that um yeah, the second job that I had was falling down some stairs and I was stoked. I was like, yeah, I'll do anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 500 bucks, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped this balcony, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, it was so weird. Um, yeah, and then quickly it kind of like, what happens is word of mouth. Like you, you kind of um, have a couple jobs and then people are like, oh, we need someone that's, you know, this height and this weight and can do this and like might like, kind of fit the look of this actress or whatever Mm -hmm. they're like oh i worked with this girl sydney like that's kind of how all of the jobs start to come in it's weird but and it takes a while so i think from the time that i started to the time that i was being able to work full time it was probably like a good three four years um yeah so but like i was always picking up other things on the side too like i worked at starbucks for a while i coached at tempest for Mm -hmm. quite a while Mm. and it was good yeah like i was able to do all that but it wasn't Stunts I wasn't making a living off of until, I want to say, like, maybe sometime in 2017. I was able to, yeah, quit my job at Tempest and, yeah, then just focus on that along with just training. But that was also because I got sponsorships, too. So um, I had Tempest, like, paying me monthly, and then I also had Yokohama paying me monthly. So 
but yeah, it was a long journey. <clears throat> um, everybody has a very different way of getting into stunts. Oh, and the other thing too is that eventually, at least in America, I know it's different in England where you guys have like the stunt register and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. We don't have that, but um, we do have this union that eventually you have to join to be able to work on certain things. Okay. Like most things, you have to be part of the union. Mm-hmm. So um, Lucy, whenever she would get like a, a call to do something that was non-union related, which means shit pay, <laughs> she would give it to me, mm-hmm. which is I was stoked to be doing it because like I didn't have that coming in any other yeah. way. So I was like, yeah, I'll take all of them. So mm-hmm. it was the stuff that Lucy was like, yeah, I don't want to do that for that price, but I'm sure Sydney will. Yeah. Lucy so, Romberg, yeah. Lucy Romberg, by the way. Yeah. Lucy know. Romberg. Yeah. I should know. definitely mention how much of a legend she is and yeah, how yeah, much absolutely. she definitely helped me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so so that's kind of how that worked until I was able to join the union, which was probably within like a year of working. And what happens is to be able to join the union, um, one of the ways to do it is if you're if you're the only fit for a job, they have to like do what's called a Taft Hartley, which means you're an automatic join. Taft. And then yeah, I don't know why it's called that, so don't ask. Um. It sounds British <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> Taft Hartley. Taft Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then you join that and uh, you have to pay 3500 bucks. And at the time I was so broke that right. I made that payment and then I was broke again mm. um, after my first job where I made more than 3500 right. Still think stunt register sounds harder than that. Oh, fair. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like the people that are on the register that are in the, in the, in the industry, um, they really hate people that are in the industry, like just organically without jumping through hoops essentially doing the stunt rush. So <laughs> Katie McDonald has spoken about this on, oh, on yeah. our podcast with her. But yeah, yeah. The, the disdain like from a lot of the people that have I paid my dues, man. Like <laughs> just yeah. like it didn't just I just yeah, I but I also don't like that. Possible. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I don't mean to keep interrupting you. I'm a little bit drunk, but um <laughs> <laughs> No, do, 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 please. I just yeah, I, I don't like that mentality either of like, well I had to do it really hard this way and Therefore, you have to be like, do it this hard. But then again, I also carry that characteristic with me all the time, too. So I can't really say that I'm like so against it when I also do it sometimes as well. (laughs) Mm, Yeah. 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 I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Do I do that? (laughs) I do it sometimes. I guess probably everyone does it. To an extent. But it's, it's nice to practice that like, I've been through this hardship. I'll try my best not to get other people to have to go through that instead. Like, that's that's a much better way to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise you're just shitting on people all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I don't. I wouldn't want people to have to go through like some of the things that I went through. Like when mm-hmm. I, yeah, I mean, like first of all, like I said, I had to take care of old people. That was a really hard thing to do. But mm-hmm. I was always grateful that I had a job. And then when I moved to LA and how. Um, there's such a lack of security with with pursuing stunts. It's just so hard in that way. And like, I remember there was a day where I had, I think it was $2 in my bank account and I was so hungry and I had to choose between like that or just getting a little bit of gas in my car. And I chose sure. to like get this like cookie so that we could at least have some calories yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know, I don't want people to have to go through that to get to where I'm at right now. Like mm-hmm. I want them to be able to um find a better way to get into that easier it's just yeah it's such an interesting thing but but i have it more when it's related to parkour stuff i'm like no you're not ready for that like don't be so entitled you know what i mean Mm. (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah. so how much of um your stunt work right now is parkour because i a lot of people i think that's a big reason for starting parkour as well because they like I, I, I probably not for a ton of people like probably just want to do it because it looks sick but like a lot of people will have this dream of becoming a stunt man shortly after starting parkour mm. and like because they they see that as the best route of making money but then you get into stunts and then you realize you're getting pulled around by wires and dislocating your shoulder and and and, <laughs> and, and, and like falling down stairs and everything and you're literally just a body to take hits like yeah. um so like yeah how much of your um of your uh career essentially is it's how much point. of it where, where you actually use the skills that you've accumulated through the years of training parkour yeah i mean i i use it a fair bit but it's mostly because i get like when they need something parkour related like i'm the person to call in mm. la to do that so that's, that's, that's kind of how that happens but um oftentimes like it's so much more than that i think I think if you do parkour, it does not mean that you can do stunts. I think yeah, that, that sure. is like a huge They're thing. Too, it's a big niche. Yeah. It's a big niche. 
It is. It's so different. And I remember thinking that too when I first got into stunts. It's like, oh, how hard can it be? But I don't have much. Back then, I had like zero experience with martial arts and like I had no idea how to throw a punch, but I thought I could do it. And like, yeah, I mm. look back on it. I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, there's so much more to it that you have to learn and have mm. to get good at. So that's why I think, in a sense, like the stunt register is like, somewhat of a good idea because it like yeah it shows you're well-rounded you yeah yeah exactly but um yeah with stunts in order to be a more hireable person like you need to be good at so many things it can't just be parkour yeah, yeah um yeah. that's kind of how i got my start obviously i was able to kind of make a living off of well no i don't even know what i'm saying i wasn't able to make a living off of it until i like got involved with other aspects of stunts but um yeah the parkour jobs would kind of go to me and stuff but then when it came to like, oh, can you fight? It's like, mm, not really. Hmm. So eventually I learned how to like fight for camera and make that look a lot better. Um, I've gotten involved with doing things like fire, um, wire work, uh, things with like a bow staff weapons work, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it just, it takes a lot of training that's not just parkour related. And as I said earlier, there's a huge acting element to it too. Like <laughs> there's a lot of parkour athletes that move extremely well, but when when you become a performer and you have to like double an actor and stuff, there's this huge part at play. It's not just like, can you throw yourself off this ledge, but it's, can you be the character throwing yourself off this ledge? So yeah. there's just, yeah, there's just so much more to it than, than what you'd think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, as far as the wire work and stuff is concerned, like that shit is actually so dangerous. Yeah. Like right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people don't understand that. That is so dangerous. Um, yeah. I'm not keen. Not keen yeah. for that. I don't, I, I really don't want to be a stuntman yeah i mean and it's like it's not for everybody um so one of my one of my least and most favorite things to do in stunts are called ratchets um so you're on a wire and you're hooked up to a machine that's basically kind of similar to that of an electric car so once they push the button i don't know exactly how it like i don't know how to explain how it works but Basically, you go from like zero to however fast very quickly. So you're pulled like off of your feet and stuff and there's a wrong way to do it. So like if let's say um, you're supposed to put tension on the wire, so you have to lean forward on it like if it's in front of your shoulders. Right. So it's and not then, like a straight jolt. No, like, yeah, with, you, with slack on the. Yeah, you have to yeah. you have to create so much um, tension on it that you can't have any slack. Otherwise, it'll pull you into the ground. So oh, okay. yeah, if you're being pulled backwards, let's say. So you, you can't have any slack on it. Otherwise it'll, it'll fuck you up. So <clears throat> yeah, let's say you're leaning forward. You have the wires in front of your shoulders and you're going to go backwards. Um, and you're going like 15 feet or whatever. It's burps. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say they push the button and it doesn't go off and you decide like, oh, weird. And you stand up straight and then it suddenly does go. Well, you're dead. Because it pulled you to the ground and you smacked yeah. your head open. Mm. Fuck that shit. Yeah, man. so it's like there, th there's so much that people don't realize like how dangerous it is. Um, it's it's not something to play with. Like wires, I love them because it really forces me to like understand where I am in that present moment. Like I have to be so focused. But I mean, that's how I straight up like tore my rotator cuff was a wire yeah. gag. Um, I was doing something called a forward facing gooch wrap. So gooch trap yeah, gooch wrap so it's right. like what it sounds like the wire goes between your legs oh it like, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> when it pulls it flips you yeah and when it pulls it flips you so it's not like doing a normal flip it feels very different you have zero control yeah and uh basically you're just trying to find your feet and fall back it's kind of like a front half um yeah you do like a front half you try and find your feet and fall backwards but when i was doing this um i would miss my feet every time i don't know what was going wrong with it we couldn't figure it out but we just decided to keep going for some reason. And so I had done like 30 takes of this. And then, yeah, well, there was just one where I just kept landing on my shoulder. And uh, yeah, then then I found out my shoulder was like completely torn. <laughs> so it does happen and people do get hurt, but it's a lot of times it's from wire stuff. Fucking hell. Yeah. Yeah, when it's out of your control, it's like... yeah. You're just getting flung about by the wires and you can do your mm. best to control it. But like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's well, it's a lot of teamwork, too, because you have the riggers, you have the people that are pulling you and stuff. And, you know, like just good communications. It's a lot of trust. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of trust in those people. And like if you get someone that's not very good at their job in a rigging department, like, I don't mm -hmm. know, I would probably just say no to the job, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Like I right. at like, this point, when you work with a new team. Surely that's so scary. Right? It is. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like um, 
what I normally do is I find out who is going to be mm. rigging, and then I'll ask around like, "Hey, how is this person?" <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. You kind of make it because it's your yeah. life that's on the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. And and that sounds like you're being picky, but like <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's like it's yeah. you know it's dangerous. Like yeah. and yeah, one sure. thing that I learned too that I used because like I said I used to be like, "Oh, five hundred dollars for a stairfall? Yeah, I'm in." Mm. But like a lot of times people used to ask me like, hey, are you available this day? And I'd say yes, no matter what. Mm. Like, I didn't even know what it was. And I'd just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm available. But yeah. now I'm like, yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's a really, question, yeah. really good question. <laughs> it's, it's even more so for for you as well, because in the background outside of your, I mean, you're, you're a professional parkour athlete as well mm -hmm. as, as a stunt woman. But like you want to keep your body relatively healthy and injury free so you can practice the sport that you love yeah like, whether competitively or not like um yeah like i don't know so anyone well, listening like that wants to <laughs> get into stunts <laughs> well and it's not anything against it of course like yeah. you can learn all these things and like it doesn't have to be dangerous like people are looking out for you and stuff but like yeah, your safety sure. is your priority and i think that's mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that i've learned from it but yeah. oh what was i gonna say about that mm, just slipped my mind so eventually we'll get it back yeah. oh no i remember okay so someone told me this a long time ago and i really really enjoyed it um, he was saying this to me, but he was also telling me that he had said this about Lucy Romberg previously. And he said, um, he's like, you're too talented to do car hits. And I just thought that was like an interesting thing. And yeah, I was like, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, he's yeah. like, he's like, you don't want to do that. Like a car hit is for someone that like, isn't good at anything else. And like, they can just get wrecked and it's fine. Like, right. yeah. And yeah, so he yeah, was basically yeah. saying Makes like, sense. don't do a car hit. It's not worth it. Right. Because you can get injured we, from them and stuff. Yeah. Or, yeah. And for you to be of use in many other ways like <coughs> bless you <laughs> 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 like good good point yeah <sighs> yeah You're i right. rest my case <laughs> excuse me um but yeah, yeah it makes sense for them to keep you healthy like if if you're mostly usable for like stuff where your best kept healthy yeah on yeah. set you're the only person that can do a certain skill it's like yeah, yeah. you keep that person safe because like <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people get hit by cars, I guess. Right? There are, yeah, there are. There are a lot of people that are good at that and yeah. want to do that and stuff. But I, I think that that's probably something where I'd probably draw the line mm -hmm. unless I knew, unless there was, um, I was working for someone that I really, really trusted. Like there's a few coordinators that I would probably do that for because I know that they would put me in the best situation possible to do that. Right. But yeah. there's certain coordinators I just probably wouldn't even work with at this point. Really? Like, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, fair. Mm -hmm. I know this seems kind of like a wrap up end of podcast kind of question, um, but it's quite relative to to this, I guess. Like, mm -hmm. where do you see yourself in ten years? Like, are you still ideally doing stunts? Oh, god, that's a hard question. Um, it's I don't know. I think a lot about that kind of stuff, and I honestly have no idea. Um, I have goals and things that I'd like to accomplish, but I just. It's it's so hard. It's kind of the first time in like my life that I don't really see a clear future. Mm. It's um mostly Surely it's been like hasn't hasn't it not been like that for for a lot of it? Or no. Is it, <laughs> or is it like now you well like you have goals and then it's like your you're seeing your future as like maybe not stay like completely stable, but mm -hmm. like at least you're heading towards like goals yeah but. um so it's interesting because i actually up until now i had a lot of these goals and i was like i had a very kind of clear direction that i wanted to go in and yeah. stuff and then, then i made that happen yeah that's what i mean like you're kind of there like. yeah exactly but now that you get there you don't really know what's ahead it's kind of like being on the top of a mountain it's kind of like gray like yeah. you're like oh shit it's better than being on the hedonic treadmill though where you yeah constantly just want like more and more like the next thing and, and you're never actually content or whatever but yeah it's honestly no i'm very realizing happy. that you're actually on top of the mountain and yeah you're, yeah you're definitely where you're at i'm right very so. happy and i think that's what's confusing is i'm i'm kind of open for a lot of different things to happen um so i oh um with stunts there's definitely more things that i want to accomplish with that um obviously and i would love to get more into the coordinating and th that aspect of it where you get to be more creative um, I've gotten to like be a consultant, like a parkour consultant before. And that was really fun. Like I really enjoyed that kind of behind the scenes more like being able to 
help people understand like what's going on conceptually with parkour. And um, I've gotten to train actors too, which I really love. Like I love doing that with them. Um, I trained uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson for um, this movie that he's doing called Craven the Hunter. That'll, I don't know when it comes out, maybe next year or something. I don't know who that is. He's a British guy, so. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah we, don't surprised. Know, we don't all know each other. I know it's a small island compared yeah. to. Did you, did you see Bullet Train? <laughs> Fuck, no, I didn't. I, uh. I, I've, been on, I've been on a bunch of flights where, like, two people in front of me are watching Bullet Train and I'm kind of watching this film like well I'm meant to be watching the film I'm watching and they're just like this looks fucking mad like yeah. but I'm not actually committed to watching it myself it's actually so funny Brad, Brad Pitt he's gorgeous as yeah well. <laughs> but it's actually so funny you should watch it, it looks hilarious but um yeah he was, he's also in Kick-Ass so he's the kid in Kick-Ass that's what everybody says but I've never actually seen that movie so oh. I can't really relate Mm -hmm. but anyway um so he yeah i got to train him for like five months and i really enjoyed that because it's like it's super fun to kind of get into like what his character is gonna do and like how his character would move and i really really enjoyed that process of that so i'd love to do more of that kind of stuff along with just being a performer and then eventually i'd maybe like to have a kid so that's a hard thing too because Mm. i'm like oh i should if that's within the next 10 years i mean it certainly should be so that's like a hard thing as well don't want to be taking stair falls with a kid in the belly not in the belly at least (laughs) (laughs) sorry i don't know my anatomy (laughs) um Mm. wow yeah but yeah Yeah, honestly i i don't know um there's there's a few different things that i would like to accomplish obviously but yeah it's it's so hard to see right now Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can't give you a clear answer of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Just seeing what opportunities come, where life yeah. takes you. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah exactly. Yeah. What about uh, plans for Tempest? Because I know the um, Kings of Concrete is also coming up in yeah. July, the second Kings the of second Concrete. second one, yeah. Mm. Yeah, Kings of Concrete. I'm so stoked about that. The first one was really amazing. It was mm. my favorite um, parkour event ever you were judging and i was judging yeah, yeah. yeah i wasn't even competing and i just That's i loved sick. it it was so sick um and you went around europe to film like the extra kind of um like filming ellis and miranda and stuff yeah, and, like for, yeah. for like like personality pieces to go along with the competition stuff that wasn't yeah. actually used in the end. it wasn't used <laughs> but it should it will be <laughs> yeah. it will be. i know it was yeah it was hard cuz i think what had originally happened is we had this idea for this documentary that um yeah i would have much preferred it that way obviously like having the documentary talking about like how they're feeling leading up to this competition and mm. stuff and like obviously you have so many badass competitors that like have such a good perspective on this but anyway um Basically, from what I understand from Gabe, uh, the people that he was trying to promote this to, like ESPN and stuff, they just wanted a dry run through of the competition. So that's kind of like what that ended up being. But um, if you get it on Vimeo, there'll be more stuff coming out um, with that. So it'll have more of that kind of stuff in it. I don't know when the plan to release any of that is, but I just know that that's a thing. And then, um, so the second Kings of Concrete is happening in August and... I don't exactly know my role within it yet, mm. but um, obviously I'll be there to help in whatever way possible. They want me to compete because I am awkwardly qualified. Yeah, <laughs> awkwardly qualified. <laughs> yeah, I just I wanted to help one of the months that there wasn't a lot of female participation in the on sites or yeah. sorry not on sites online qualifiers and stuff. So I submitted a video, and <laughs> since there, yeah, and, and and since there hasn't been like a lot of participation, I'm still somehow qualified. No, and it's just. Mm. I didn't want to be qualified. <laughs> yeah. I know they're like putting the pressure on, but um, oh, <laughs> but yeah, with Tempest, like we have an idea for a um, what's it called? An ath- a-, a video um where every athlete on it has like their own little piece. Oh, so, that'd be so cool. yeah, I'm super excited about it, and hmm. um, it's been really fun to watch like Jeff and Nate and Corbin um kind of work through these challenges that they're coming up with and I have to start thinking of my own that I want to actually put in there. Um one of the things that I want to do again is actually a double cork on concrete because it's been forever. Mm. Um the last time I did it was I want to say 2017 and I um partially tore my ACL doing it. Oh shit. Yeah, so <clears throat> I never went back to doing them really except for last summer. When I randomly did it for the first time in so long, and I was so good at them, 
And I was just like, I don't know where this came from, but I was <laughs> no, not no, no. able to do that before. <laughs> Stars aligned. Yeah. And then, and then just like how I've told you before, um, work got crazy and I didn't keep up the consistency of that. So I would like to actually have my, my piece in the video and I want to do that in there. So that's kind so, of like one of the plans. I know that's like giving away, but I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, those are kind of the things that I know mm. of right now. Yeah. 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 I'm still confused why why the um so they release like Kings of the Concrete one like a year late already because they're, they're I guess they're trying to sell it and to yeah. ESPN and stuff yeah and that sounds very complicated yeah it is um, I so think... it's already like really late and now they're still like trying to release stuff from the future like yeah I don't... from the same one when there's a new one happening it's... i don't fully know oh, no. i don't fully know so stuff moves on so quick like in does. terms of like competition and everything they've like, got and... content there it's, it's a shame to waste it yeah something. it yeah. certainly is yeah 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 Yeah. for sure i think um i mean gabe will have better answers for you about that kind of stuff yeah i'm um, really glad they borrowed it out and it wasn't just like the tempest games from like 2013 or I know. And no <laughs> yeah, one ever so saw sad. the light of day but <laughs> everyone that competed like was just like well <laughs> <laughs> no for sure and i think i think uh coming from someone that's like seen a lot of the behind the scenes of tempest and stuff and just just in general like la speaking i think there's this like hyper fixation with things being perfect and being of like a certain production value um mm. so i think that's kind of like what they get stuck in sometimes yeah which is, is good like, to have it sure. is for sure but it kind of like has that happen where there's a little, a little bit too much pressure to have it be perfect instead of just having it be like good enough and putting it out mm. you know like they really really want it to be of high quality and stuff yeah. so and not only that but like distributed so as many eyes as possible can see it yeah like, which is which is what i guess that i mean not as a bad deal for for you for you guys like getting whatever money or whatever from distributing it on wherever it goes but as many eyes seeing it as possible is, is great for parkour More eyes seeing parkour yeah, yeah definitely yeah, it's what we want. and it's and I, I know the second one's going to be a lot better too because um there's been a lot more planning that's gone into it and then mm. there have been people and companies like wanting to get involved after seeing how it was um but yeah i don't know and the other thing too that blows my mind is um kings of the concrete the first one was actually like planned out within like three months like there was not a lot of planning time mm. at all um so for something Fair. like that yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> it was very, it was very impressive mm. like leading up to it i have a lot of faith in gabe and i think he's like so good at that kind of stuff yeah. but there was a part of me that was like i don't know how this is gonna happen like they literally right. built the course the day before the event. <laughs> wow, <okay. laughs> yeah. isn't like the 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 um the car park of the valley it was like, yeah, yeah yeah we didn't have a place to do it so we just did it out there it was <laughs> it's, it's, it's we're good. looking for a better location this year though um mm. but if not i mean we have that what's that space. mandalay bay thing is, so, is that not kings of the concrete it's no no no. it's not in um, las vegas yeah the thing in las vegas is um a partnership with adrenaline worldwide okay yeah which is i'm not even sure exactly but um basically it's just an event where a lot of different types of athletes are going to join together like tricking and parkour and like just kind of general like sport karate that kind of that kind okay. of world they're all just going to be jamming together and then i think we're having the kotc to qualifier there so if people want to come uh try to qualify for K kotc they can okay yeah that's oh, what sweet. that is yeah, yeah yeah was it always like a plan well i mean you said it was three months before the event when they was that the the i when the idea came around like because the they had these online um competition where people submit their lines and everything mm -hmm. since covid was it mm -hmm. and yeah. it's like I, i'm wondering like when when they started using like the um Oh, fuck what's it called just is it just the tempest online mm -hmm. is that what it what is that the name of it yeah it was just tempest online yeah yeah that's such a sick idea but like yeah. when when suddenly it was announced that the, the qualifiers are are the winners of those i was like oh, you son of a bitch is that so cool like <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, i think like, I, I just always wondered how long has that been like the plan i know the kings of the Con yeah kings of the concrete was actually an idea for years um mm -hmm. gabe and he had been talking about that since since tempest games yeah <laughs> probably <laughs> honestly like it's been something i've known about for a long time that they wanted to do um but the so the tempest online thing was such a cool idea because actually what we were going to do was have these like secret competitions 
in LA every month um, before the pandemic started. Right. So it was, I think we had one in February of mm. 2020. And what we were going to do is they had to kind of like look up this location and find out where the competition was and show up on that day. And like, there would be like little prize money oh, and stuff like that. It was right. super fun. We had one of them and it was a great turnout. It was awesome. People were like really kind of thrown down. secret then. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they all just kind of like someone found out where it was and then just told everybody. <laughs> so it's not, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So that was really, really cool. And then um, right after, obviously, things got shut down. So then Gabe had the idea of like moving this thing online. And then I think at some point or another, like probably within the first couple, he was like, oh, we should make it so that way Kings of the Concrete could happen. These people will be the winners and all that. And they can they can come out to Kings of the Concrete. So I think it had been an idea for a little while. Mm. And then, oh, my God, I just sped everywhere. <laughs> no, <she laughs> would have gotten away and then, obviously, Kings of the Concrete, like I said, have been an idea for a long time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, God. I'm really sad. <laughs> oh. And Gabe, um, I think he just saw an opening and he was like, okay, so this is happening in like less than three months. And we're all just like, whoa, okay. And, um, you know, like I said, I have a lot of trust in Gabe and I know that he's capable of doing all these things. So when yeah. he said he was going to do it, I was like, all right, yeah. I guess it's time. Oh, yeah. Gabe's the man. Yeah. That's one. Um, I want to talk. You said there was a funny story about Jesse LaFleur's ad where he's shouting parkour. Oh my god! And <laughs> it's just insult to injury at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and it had to be Jesse LaFleur as well. Oh so, like, um, for context, I mean, I'll put it on the screen for the joiners watching. But um, there was a recent advert with I don't know some something some um spray or no no it was professional orkin. so you could orkin orkin it's like okay. a bug brand <laughs> bug was... spray no it's or... not a bug spray it's like bug professionals yes. yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah and he and it was like don't just get any professional because they got like a professional parkour athlete that's just jumping around the house trying to get rid of the spider in the corner or something and he and jesse jesse is like shouting parkour and they're just like <laughs> front flipping around the house wow. and stuff he does a knee front from the banister, which is, yeah, oh, nice. that's cool. Yeah. Well, so what's the, what's, what's the story? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I actually got an audition for that, um, and I did not want to do it because of the parkour thing. <laughs> oh, you turned it down because of that? I didn't turn it down, but I was just like, <laughs> they, put you they off better it. be paying a lot of money for that. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I remember I called him about it, and I was like, Ugh. I think just, just for context as well, we're, we're talking about, like, parkour said in that kind of tone like parkour like is is just that's what we get like especially more in america as well because oh, of the yeah. american office scene um where like michael scott and dwight and everything is, is shouting parkour and everything yeah you you all know this anyway but okay just so making sure we all know well first of all it's the bane of my existence second of all um it's the reason why a lot of american people like american parkour athletes aren't going to get sponsorships by red bull <laughs> it's like really? literally stuff like that people just don't take the sport seriously like they don't mm, view yeah. it as like a very um, it runs that deep it does it's genuinely a thing like if you're doing parkour people will yell it at you or um if I like see a coworker or something like that, um, and they're like, "Oh, you do parkour!" Like I always think about the office when, mm. and and I'm just like, see, that's like how deep it runs. Is like, do you know why Red Bull UK don't take parkour seriously here? Hmm. Ryan Doyle. <laughs> Not even joking. Oh my god. Not even joking. He ruined it for us. Oh just yeah. Because it's that weird. Anyway, <laughs> continue. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Jesus. The story. <laughs> I'm going in. Ryan Doyle. <laughs> but yeah, like um. I kind of got the script for it, and um, they were like, "Oh yeah, like this is what this is what we want you to say in your audition tape." And I was like, "Fuck's sake! Like, I don't want to do that." And so I called Jesse about it, and he's like, "Oh, that's that's strange. Like, I'm already direct booking with um, with the director. Like, I'm already hired for that job." I was like, "Oh, and you're gonna do it?" And he was like, "Yeah, I mean, they're gonna pay me quite well." And so it was like it ended up being like a really good thing for him. Yeah. Because yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly how much they paid him, but I know that it was like enough to where it's like, okay, like fair enough. I definitely probably would have said yes to it too. <laughs> but it was oh, just... I'd love to see you do it. To be fair. Oh, I, I yeah, no. <laughs> Never it's... let you hear the end of it because it's like kind of like that's why I say like if anyone's Jesse Jesse Lafleur, like you kind of expect it from him already because he always has like I mean he's fucking safe as fuck in real life, but like mm -hmm. online he has kind of this gimme gimmicky marketable like persona that he 
does so well and so it's like kind of him, expected yeah. like within the parkour community at least yeah yeah, yeah it mm-hmm. works for him but like it'll be so funny to, just to see you yeah. just like oh, for fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> why I've, yeah I've, it's so funny because like i've trained with jesse for years and like he's one of my best friends and yeah he's great he's like he is so good at that, like turning it on, having that personality and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I, and he doesn't I, give a fuck as well. Like, like you can't. Like that's the thing is you can't if you're gonna do that. He just does what he needs. Does what he needs to do. Yeah, it's so good. I like literally. Can't, I just can't. I care too much. I think, and like, I just don't. I don't know. Like, I don't know, because he can do it, and it's it's all fine. And like, I don't know. He's still like a great person in in person, and just I don't know. How am I explaining this? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm just not very good at like going there, I guess. But, um, I did actually audition for it. So I ended up doing that and it was terrible. Like it was, I, it was, you not had to shout pop Yeah, I did. Um, oh, no, yeah. I deleted it. Was there an audition it? Tape? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh. <laughs> I did not want it out there. Oh God. <laughs> I definitely deleted it. I was like, I don't want to look at this. I don't Is want it this in your trash. Exist. Like, did no, you did it double delete it? I double deleted it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Oh. I double deleted it. But you know what? It's actually so funny, though, because I watched that commercial. I'll get it off Richard later. Yeah. Yeah. Stick it on screen. Can if we, we manage to get it. it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, like, worse. when it came out, though, I was like, actually, somehow Jesse kind of made that look good. You know what he I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, he pulled yeah. it off without it make, like without it being cringy. Fair, yeah. yeah. I was like, huh, all right. It's only really funny. Fair yeah, play, because so. I did not, like, I did not know how to do that. <laughs> I had multiple people sending it to me, like, expecting, like, some some reaction from it. <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> and then straight away I sent it to you, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. this, this checks out. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, please don't give me that. The next question. <laughs> what grinds your gears in the parkour community right now? God, I have a few. We're going to make this a common, um, an ongoing thing with all our Ooh, guests like from here on. Um, okay. Yeah. So first one is flakiness. Um, that's like one of my biggest ones actually is that I feel like people can't commit to anything. Um, and this doesn't go for every parkour athlete, obviously, Mm. but this is just a general theme that I found. It's like, Hey, let's train on Friday or whatever. And then Friday comes around, you know, actually I'm not going to do it. And I'm guilty of it sometimes too, but I do think there's like this lack of commitment with people like in the parkour community that I've definitely noticed. And I don't know if it's more of an American thing, Mm. but it's something I see all the time. It is with projects at least. Yeah. Tempest Games 2013. (laughs) But it's just, yeah, it's just, maybe it's more of an LA thing, honestly, because that's just a normal thing in LA. Like, oh, let's get lunch. How about Friday? And then like, Mm. they won't get back to you or something. Sorry, you can't. Yeah, that kind of thing. Or just, yeah, just straight up not get back to you. But do you experience that too? Do you find it like, do you find Mm. people to be flaky? I think so. Yeah. 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 I don't know how much of it is a parkour thing, but, or maybe parkour culture kind of mm-hmm. amplifies it or whatever. Yeah. Um, flakiness. Uh, one of them is actually entitlement. Um, I think there's quite a lot of newer people that like are expecting to kind of get the same opportunities if, as people that have been doing it for a really long time without like realizing that any sport that you do, like if you look at any other sport in the world, like after three to five years of training it, like what sports do you actually get paid for and all yeah. that? Like, oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, fully. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's kind of like this weird sort of entitlement where people like that have been training for a certain amount of time or something, they think that- like, Why is Sydney deserve- getting all the jobs? She's like 30 and barely trains these days. <laughs> yeah. Like, and this, this, this um, line of thinking is definitely happening mm-hmm. quite a bit. Like I've, I've heard people talking about it, like- Obviously not just about you. <laughs> All about, about you, it. actually. Yeah, it's like in Sydney. Just like, no, I fucking hate you, mate. Um, <laughs> but no, like um, people that like aren't on the competition circuit anymore, or aren't like doing extremely well on Instagram to to be seen as leading the sport or whatever anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're still getting like all the jobs, and it is. It, I don't know if it's like a disdain because it feels like people have like a monopoly on like the professional side of monopoly on the professional side of parkour or whatever, but it is experience in that environment matters. Like you said, like there are, there are many things to know about in that environment 
which makes it very different than just coming off the street and doing it. Like mm -hmm. professionalism really matters. Like, and and it, of course it makes sense to get the person that has a big long CV of years and years of being in that industry and because you know you can trust them rather than like the person that's been training five years and and hasn't really got anything like yeah uh, on their portfolio or whatever i'm a flake on the day that the job comes on. yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, <damn> it. <laughs> merge both of them together yeah, yeah, yeah. no it, it is true. it's a real thing though that i've seen and it's not just with like jobs it's also like competitions and stuff and like why they don't they're like i never get invited to these things and blah blah, blah. it's like if you want to get invited to that stuff you either have to like put yourself out there mm. you have to like message the person that's in charge of that kind of stuff like i don't know there's so much to go into with that kind of stuff but i feel like for me personally there was a competition one time uh it was actually that sky ladder competition where dom designed that fucking shit yeah, like yeah. <laughs> that thing yeah so originally um i mean there, there wasn't a lot he could do really like if they no. <laughs> build a course down these stairs it's and like it's well not, of course it's all gonna be drops like. it's not a shit on dom it's just like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just the fact that it was like crazy. crazy yeah he put a slide in there as well like there's a brief moment where your knees get a rest yeah anyway, yeah but okay so before that even happened um i remember jesse had gotten an email about a competition happening in china and um he like i guess there was going to be i don't know like 16 men are involved or something like that and i was like oh i really want to compete in that so i got the email of that guy and i reached out to him and sent him this email and it came from like this place of like hey i i think we could help each other out like I really want to participate in this competition. I think it would be really amazing. And this is what I would bring to it. Like, here's a list of girls that I think we could get to also do it. So it's not just men and like all this. And he actually listened to me and he added women, only three of them, mm. <laughs> but like he added women to the competition. And then um, they were like, sorry, there's not going to be any prize money though. And so then I was like, oh, let me try this again. So I got on, I emailed. Wait, remind me what, what, what this is, sorry. The Skyladder competition. Oh, the Skyladder yeah. one, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so then I, I just said like, hey, I understand, um, but I'm I'm just wondering if there's any way possible that the women can get some kind of a prize. It's more of an incentive for us to try to like mm -hmm. actually win, sure. you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> all this. And so they ended up doing a prize. Oh, it wasn't nice anywhere that. near the men, but this is what it was at the time. Like sometimes you wouldn't even get prize money at all. So um, like Lucy for as an example like every time that she did red bull art emotion like i don't think she was getting much at all for winning that you know what i mean so it's definitely come a long ways because in 2022 for me i got paid equally for mm. the first time in red bull art emotion as the men so but this is what it was back then you know it's like having to kind of uh communicate this and like sort of come into it with that kind of respect rather than just being like, oh, I don't like this and going online and like kind of putting people on blast and stuff. Not that that's not mm. a way to do things, but I just find it to be so much more effective mm. this way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I see I see the value in um, putting people on hot coals in, in terms of like, if there isn't people like chatting shit about it, like me on this podcast, um, <laughs> then... I don't. I don't know if there will be like incentive for people to change and make like you're not putting pressure. I think putting pressure on people to do the right thing is is I don't know. It, it needs to happen in a way, but yeah. it isn't. And it's hard I, for it to come across like not like uh, you're putting like you said putting them on blast. It's it's an interesting an thing scenario. because sometimes that's really effective and like and it is good in that sense, but. Oftentimes, I feel like it comes with like a weird resentment or something like that. Um, whereas like if it came from a place where you were able to communicate like the needs of this and like showing what you can bring to the table, it's like, oh, shit, like I actually want to make this happen, you know, rather than like I feel guilted into making this happen. Yeah. 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 I, I think that's that's what happened with uh, Mini um from movement who who was organizing Rude movement masters uh lisa reached out and steffi and um uh i i, I did as well but it, just in a comment mm. um and he replied to lisa and steffi just like um like they were straight up calling him out as a misogynist or something yeah but like they really weren't they were just like kind of <laughs> addressing concerns and asking questions and stuff really and and yeah i don't know it's a hard topic because it, it's probably when you're in that position like um 
it's hard not to get super defensive and assume that they are calling you a like misogynist, which is can't be very nice to to be uh, definitely <laughs> accused yeah. of. But no, yeah, it's 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 one of those things because of course, like you don't. Um, I don't know the whole situation with that, and I, from what I understand, it's like uh, there was there was that competition where basically they only invited men. I don't know. I wasn't part yeah. of that conversation. I wasn't. I didn't hear anything about it or like try to reach out to him or anything like that. Yeah. But um, yeah. I I just I never know like with stuff like that. It sounds like they tried to reach out to him and then it just kind of he he just called them names or something like. I I don't think so. Just got like very hot tempered pretty oh, quickly. Yeah. From what, yeah from what it seems like from what i remember yeah i don't know like i i never know what's going on with those organizers too like whether or not they're under a certain kind of stress to like do exactly yeah. as they're said yeah, I, I, like yeah, and i, I think in so. those situations especially when they're a middleman as well like yeah you know, like it's, it's stressful enough for like for example renee dambly um organizing um spot destroyer and everything and, oh, yeah. and like when she's at the top of the thing and she's not like uh, a middleman between like a sponsor that is or or some higher up organizer that is making them do things a certain way like mm-hmm. like Nico Volchek Martel yeah Nico yeah, Martel I, yeah I'm not one, sure what he's going by right two now two surnames whatever he goes by but uh, uh, when he had uh, not only Red Bull but that what was it Samsung or something that sponsor mm. um, when oh, like wait, a lot yeah, of people were, were kicking off about the uh, unequal prize money was it prize money or representation uh the most recent one yeah 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 oh yeah it was it was Re- representation it was yeah it was it was the representation um yeah just having having more women because they were like two yeah i guess in that um, in that part he he got really upset um because i talked to him about it when i was there and he was yeah. like yeah people and i again this is not knowing that story that you just told me about like lisa and stuff reaching out to Minnie, but like he nico was like it's so crazy people put that on blast like on social media but no one asked me personally like why that was the way it was and right. i was like yeah that's that's an yeah. interesting thing but also it's like i guess there's it's good there's, to have a story uh, as to why yeah i don't know i mean maybe there's uh, like some virtue signaling and stuff going on a bit as well um, mm. but i think um he he th- what i can't really forgive him for is he he threatened travis and lilu i think um when they kind of spoke about it not in a mean way like travis was kind of offering like um like if you need if you need me to to help you like um find like some other women in the parkour community or something mm-hmm. like that would do really well in this competition like and i can suggest a few yeah and um he was essentially given the ultimatum that he could take the story post down uh and stop talking about this or he would lose like however much money they were offering as well as like being like having to step down from the competition mm. like from the from the phone sponsorship thing yeah. and and that's like just like trying to shut you up and and uh, like about yeah. with your values and everything like really twisting your arm and travis needed that money of course so of course yeah he, yeah he took it down yeah um, i do i do sort of remember that but yeah i know i I know that there's like that pressure yeah. obviously there's it, it's a weird thing but i think as far as organizers go and stuff like that sometimes like in that situation with uh mini and stuff like you go to the higher up to whoever that is mm. um i don't know what you can do that at red bull and stuff like that because obviously nico um is kind of like pretty much in charge of organizing that event i know mm. that there's that but the interesting thing is like i know nico personally and like he's always kind of been someone that's really really po- pushed like women as far as like mm. that goes he he very much like he believes that I can win the Red Bull Heart Emotion, like he's told me that. He thinks that I can win out of the guys, and I don't believe that in myself at all. Right. But he th- he thinks that any woman could also win. Like, he genuinely does believe that, and I think he does want the best for them. But um, I think in in that situation, he must, he must have also been, like, under a lot of stress, too. Mm. Like, if people are, like, putting that on blast as well, which, again, is totally in the right mind to do because they're like, what the fuck? Like, where's this representation and stuff? But... I guess also from his perspective, I can kind of see why where that's like holy shit, like Red Bull's like doing this event and stuff, and um, this is kind of like what we're getting in response, you know. Mm. So it's it's a weird thing. Yeah, yeah. As a whole, like we should all be grateful 
for Nico. But in, um, but yeah. like for like for, I mean, Red Bull out of motion even happening in the first place. Like <laughs> from what I remember, the story is um, Nico and some of the other guys from Vienna reached out to Red Bull, like asking for uh, sponsorship originally, mm-hmm. and somehow it boiled down to them having the option to run an event instead and that was the first ever red bull out of motion in vienna in 2007 yeah pretty much came out of that and it's been like ongoing ever since and he's been the guy that's been sorting it out and like taking that hit over and over again year after year and it's been it is as a whole on a whole like a really good thing that should be celebrated yeah i commend him for that but yeah at the same time, too, it's not a grassroots competition, so there's yeah. there's all this stuff too. Oh yeah, where for sure. Like, oh, I respect Renee and Tom. Yeah, way definitely. More from, for SPL. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so it's one of those things too, where it's like I don't know, event organizers and like whatever sponsorships they're gonna throw out like whatever ideas they have, and there's there's a certain part of it that's like it has to be done a certain way, mm. or maybe he's under a lot of pressure to yeah, do it yeah, a yeah. certain way or whatever, and then. But like grassroots competition, they have a lot more wiggle room to do whatever the fuck they want. So that's why it's always better to support that kind of stuff in general. Like, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess what I'm saying is like, we should be fucking grateful for Red Bull for being being the main like huge corporate sponsor that has remained interested in parkour. And them dealing with Nico mm -hmm. instead of Ryan Doyle, let's say, is (laughs) has been very positive for the sport. So I think thank Nico for that. Definitely, yeah. Hopefully yeah. that makes shit, makes up for all the shit I've spoken about him on previous podcasts before. <laughs> 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 um, oh, so no, funny. no, I mean it. I mean it. Oh, there, yeah, but there's like there's always two sides to a story and stuff. Even though even though sometimes it's not one that we would agree with and stuff, and it always like. I don't know, because I always just try to look at every situation that way, even if someone has this perspective that is totally different than, like, what I would agree with, and I think they're completely wrong. I try and always hear out what they have to say first. Always. Like, Mm. even if it's, like, I think it's a terrible idea and, like, think it's the worst. But I just think it's so important to kind of, like, at least hear people out Mm. and just see what they have to say. Context is key. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should have just invited him on the podcast, like, back then. (laughs) Yeah, but at the same time, it's like one of those things where it's in the heat of the moment, like people are furious about something like that, you know, and it's understandable. Yeah, I should do that more. I mean, I've done that with like uh, Fig. I had like the head judge on to debate. um, Is that one out? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Fig debate with um, Damien Puddle, Mm. CEO of Parkour Earth, and the head judge. (laughs) Oh my God, I feel like a piece of shit. Um, Why? Because I can't remember the guy's name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just cut thing. it out. Just cut all this out. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Wait, keep talking while I find him. The pressure to keep talking while he finds him. <laughs> keep talking. Keep, keep it going. Uh, oh, God. I can't. <laughs> so I'm just going to cough. <laughs> Maybe just turn your uh, iPhone uh, no. sound up so you can hear, like, all the beeps and stuff. Oh my oh, god. Oh, god. I can't think of any words. I think it was a terrible idea to like drink before doing this. Yeah, how are you getting home? Oh yeah, I mean like You're not I'm, driving, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm not driving, I don't have a car over here. Nicholas Fisher. <laughs> Nicholas Fisher. There you go, I remembered. I see. I gotta listen to that one. <laughs> yeah. And why did you need that name? I didn't, I just felt like a piece of shit if I didn't remember his name. <laughs> Okay. I'm still a piece of shit because I didn't remember his name. <laughs> but like, at least at least I've said it. No, <laughs> at least I've said it rather than just... you can use your phone. Jesus. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, he's not going to listen to this anyway. He's crying right now. Um. Right. Let's wrap this up with. Wait. Do you have any more pet peeves? Oh. There was another. Oh yeah, we kind of talked about this earlier, but we decided that like a lot of parkour people are pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> Great one to end it on. Yeah. What I don't even think I need to say more. <laughs> no, that's literally it. Yeah. I think you should say more. No, I feel like you had a really good. Don't dress up as Pikachu. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. It's a non-star. Yeah. Is that aimed at one person? Yeah, Kaylin Chan. Sasha's chatting shit about you, man. Sorry. Oh man. Sorry, mate. Um, no, what did you say earlier about, uh, yeah. about the Sonic the well, Hedgehog? Yeah, I think the main reason, fucking Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. 
Like so, fifty percent of people that get into parkour <laughs> because they want to be Sonic and the Matrix and like all these superheroes. Yeah, they want to be Goku and shit. Yeah, and it's like Assassin's Creed. And then the other half are just like want to be skaters. But... Yeah, yeah, or just do sick shit in general. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the motivations for starting parkour. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> What are you <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, is there like clear cut down? The is middle? that fact or not? What? What you just <laughs> said? <laughs> what you just said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's just... facts. Wait, so which one are you? Oh, probably a want to be a skater because yeah. I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Like that's the thing, though, is I don't care that they're weird. It's like people can do whatever they want, you know. But yeah, I guess yeah. it's like sometimes I get a little judgmental, and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and this is this has always been my argument as well. Like I don't think um, the American office, the parkour scene, <laughs> like. That wasn't the reason why parkour is, isn't taken seriously and is thought of as lame by a lot of um, the population or whatever. I think we did it to ourselves originally. Like, we were already shit and weird, especially in the very early days of parkour where, like, a lot of people that saw these original documentaries or David Bell videos or um, whatever got them into parkour, where uh, the James Bond scene they saw that and and saw that it aligned with like all this like ninjury weeby culture like and superhero <laughs> stuff um, yeah. and they were like i need to do that because th there's an actual sport where people like uh, ninja turtles or whatever yeah. um <laughs> you are like, so right we, and we were turtles. like and i think the reason why the office made fun of parkour is because we were easy pickings because we were so fucking yeah. lame in the early days yeah. i think it was so 2009 true. in uh, like when that office scene came out and we were pretty fucking lame back then yeah. especially in america oh yeah 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 you can't it's not, it's not even really would you say Amer america yeah of yeah. course the American yeah. parkour I mean, we, documentary. We, we, we all looked homeless and we were wearing like the baggiest joggers ever and shit. Oh yeah, yeah. There's that too. It's not. It's not just America, but like I'd, I'd say, like yeah, their part. Their like the the responsibility lies in their hands. Yeah. Like more so, especially. Uh, I don't know. No, we sucked as well. Yeah. yeah. Let's be honest. Parkour no, in very sense. early days is is. But America had a culture wise. Old guy does parkour. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen this video? No. You have oh, not. No, no, you must have done. No. Where is it spelled? It's bold. the worst video. It's bold, oh, no. It? oh, no, no, sorry. I have yeah, seen yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. I thought you said bald guy does Oh, bold. Yeah, no, bold. B -O -L -D, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did see that. And I remember just thinking oh. it was the cringiest thing I've ever seen. No, you don't have to play it. I've seen it. <laughs> you do. You have to play it for the podcast listeners. Nobody's going to want to listen to this. No, it's distorting right this now. This is the intro to Pornhub. <laughs> oh my god. I haven't seen this in a long time. What the You have excellent form. See if you can go deeper. Alright, turn it off that. What are you, some sort of creep? <laughs> Only if you insist. What about you? What about me? Are you some kind of attention whore? What the fuck, Who man? Who are you calling an attention whore? I'm asking because you keep sticking your ass up in the air. I have the right to exercise here if I want. Of course you do. And I have a right to approach and talk to you. And I don't I remember this at all. I have the right to tell I don't you either. to get lost. Why are you getting physical? <laughs> Is it because you think I won't hit you back? What? Are you saying that you would hit a woman? I don't remember this at all. <laughs> this is so bad. I don't have to act like a lady simply because you expect me to. Then don't expect me to act like a gentleman. They've scripted How this. would you like me to shove this up your ass? I'm not into fist fucking. Jesus Christ, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't decided. When was this day? Did yeah, the do. office come out after it? You're still here talking to me. Strong shoulders. This is so weird. Why are we watching yeah, this? You can turn it off. This is great From content. <laughs> Especially without the video, it just Tight sounds butt. so weird. Oh my god. That means you have a powerful thrust, am I right? 
I feel so objectified. You can have me. Really? If you can catch me. I don't chase girls. Catch me, and I'll let you do whatever you want to me. <laughs> That's quite a generous offer. Catch me, you pussy. <laughs> and then okay, they can just you just? <laughs> and then they spring into action, oh. and then the chase ensues. Uh, do they fuck at the end? And they do. Part I don't know. Four. And then oh. they do part. Uh, that's that's two and a half. That's half the video right there. See, this is the exact reason that I I become embarrassed that I'm from America and I do parkour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Mate, what the fuck was that? that uh, was, yeah. I don't remember it being that bad. Uh, it, they say fist fucking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what the hell was that? Who fucking scripted oh, that? Who are well, those that people? that guy is the director and filmmaker of these videos. Like, let's <laughs> look at the parkour in it. Actually, I'm I'm cu I'm just decided I'm curious. I'll turn the Damn. music down because. So now, wait, you're going to turn the music down to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, nobody's going to be like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I need this to see this. Crime podcast. Yeah. Oh, too. shit. Is this at UCLA? It is. No way. It's oh, it is. Oh, yeah, oh, my God. This yeah. is spots that I train at, you guys. Do you know these people? No. no. Is that your fucking mate? <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is like... I promise. I have no idea who that is. When was that uploaded? Because that must have been like... Fucking... Yeah, I can find out. 2000. Oh, oh, I've, I've exited it. Okay. I remember it used to come up on like my um, suggested search on YouTube. Oh, did it? Like back when like... I first started training parkour and I was like looking up my like videos of Daniel Labaka and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like somehow I'm that came up as like suggested. One, yeah. yeah. Really? It, it, so that <laughs> is definitely the first parkour video that any, like that some people have watched. Yeah. yeah. Like their first parkour experience visual experience has been that video it if, it, if, if it was that high in the recommended or suggested videos thing like yeah it might be wait i didn't fucking see how many views it's got <laughs> this is this is the 50 percent of people starting parkour <laughs> that was their first video oh no 15 <laughs> yeah <laughs> no. yeah okay so 30 percent uh are weebs and nerds yeah. uh the wannabe spider-man or whatever <laughs> and then <laughs> 11 million views. Oh no. Uploaded oh, no. nine years ago. What are the comments? What do they sound like? I hope oh, they're bad comments. This, this, this podcast. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, they're talking so clearly it's like an English lesson. That's a lesson for all the expert wow, kids who've just... never done a second of parkour in their lives. Parkour. At least they realize it. <laughs> oh, oh, there's someone there's so, one of the top comments that's got nearly two thousand likes is someone Defining parkour and free running. <laughs> Lesson for all the expert <laughs> expert commentators who Why have never done a second of parkour in their lives. Parkour overcoming <laughs> obstacles in your path does not include flips or tricks. Oh. Functionality is the primary purpose. Free running includes parkour, flips, and tricks. Self-expressive is the primary purpose. <laughs> Self-expression, sorry. Oh. Two different disciplines, closely related. Like Sorry, what? No. <laughs> Is it offensive? Yeah, no. <laughs> All right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's got two thousand likes, wow. and that's that's some Why some is... fucking dweeb who felt the need to fucking <laughs> define like and parkour. And <laughs> yeah, copy yeah. and paste it from Wikipedia. Oh Why um, is no one talking about how horrible that video is? Like... <laughs> I didn't scroll down far enough, oh, but okay. I really need a wee and we should finish this podcast. Yeah, much. it's so long. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pee so bad. Yeah, me too. Shotgun first. All right. Well, no. Men have the worst bladders. Uh, That's not have true. Have you met it? me? <laughs> I have to pee like four times a night. I don't know why we're competing over this right now. <laughs> Mate, I pee four times more. a night. You have to wake up for <laughs> it. Sometimes, yeah. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awful. You should um, stop consuming fluids before... Um, after 9 p.m. Joe Rogan told me that. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try that. Actually, no, I do, and it's still, I still gotta go. Fucking hell. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Star Podcast. The <laughs> this Kencast. is how we're ending it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is, it went downhill from, like, the moment it started. <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. Any, any, um, 
any final words and any anything that you um, think people should know yeah i feel like when we started this podcast um it's like i don't i don't want to say that no <laughs> <laughs> No. Sorry, this isn't the best version of me showing up on this podcast right now. <laughs> what do you mean? I think um, two canned cocktail Sydney <laughs> is is the best Sydney I've ever. <laughs> I appreciate I've it. Thank encountered. you, thank you. It's not something I'm proud of, but we're here. <laughs> <laughs> no, carry on. What are you going to say? Oh no, that's, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should end it with big up for being at the top of the sport for so long. Oh, yeah, thank you. It with yeah, yeah, yeah. And- what do you say? Like nine years? Yeah, like nine years competitively. Reigning yeah, competitively. I That'd mean, I wouldn't. Sick. I wouldn't say reigning like that whole time though. I mean, there was the time where like Elise won at um whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Air Whip. It was Air Whip. Thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, a big fucking competition. When are they bringing that back? I don't Air think Whip they was are. huge. Oh, yeah. that's sad. That's I know, really sad. I know. Yeah, that's not a fucking nothing competition. Air Whip was, Air Air Whip was, was huge. Sick. Mm. Yeah, big up Elise. I wish she fucking cared and trained more and filmed more. And I, yeah, she does. She's still sick. She just she doesn't. is incredible. She's, yeah, she just doesn't film it a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, Which I rate, is, I rate yeah, it in a way. as well. She's just doing it for her. Yeah, yeah. I rate it in a way, but selfishly, just but we want to see, see more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just push, push the sport. Completely agree. Yeah. All right. There you go. Oh, okay. You're trying to do another burp. <laughs> okay. Sorry, it's not good. Oh yeah, and I um, forgot to mention earlier that your podcast is called Collecting Scars. Yes. Any yes. any um, any you. ideas for guests in the future? I mean, or I want to have people you guys. Look oh yeah, that would be fun. Oh seven. I have to great. learn how to do logistical things like <laughs> record on Zoom or something. <laughs> oh yeah. But I don't know why. That's oh, that's like... that's fairly easy. That's okay, fairly maybe easy. you can tell me how to do it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. basically. Yeah, that's Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you Legend. for having me. Good luck with all getting all seven of us on a podcast. That's gonna. If you think this is chaotic, then. Yeah, I think I'd do it differently. <laughs> <laughs> we choose the joints next time. Yeah, no, um, yeah. definitely just bring this one. We'll get bitters. <laughs> bitters. Bitter. I'm just checking my email now. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep recording. All right, thank you everyone for do you listening. Read one out. No. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Read, read oh, some of your conversation God. with your husband, Richard. He hasn't said anything to me, and I'm kind of surprised. Oh, shit. Just finished. Come get me. <laughs> Come get me, yo. <laughs> get me out of here. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>